All right, this is time to use optics to actually do something useful. So we're looking to look at images and curved mirrors. The whole point of a curved mirror is to create an image at a certain point, either real or virtual, with different properties than the object you're actually looking at. For example, if you're watching this on a data projector right now, the image you're looking at is actually created by a curved mirror. The object is actually up in the data projector. It's a very tiny version of what you're looking at right now. The image is a much larger version that is projected on the screen, so it's a real image. Now, what's an image? Well, images form where the rays of light converge after hitting a mirror. Images have four properties we're interested in. Where it forms, so that's di, the distance of the image from the mirror. How big it is, that's hi. Is it upright or inverted? And is it real or virtual? Up till now with plane mirrors, we've only ever seen virtual images. But a real image is actually where the light would go. So, first thing we need to do when we're looking at a mirror is how do we describe it? Well, we draw a mirror in a kind of a different way than you're going to see it on the actual bench. We draw a line right through the middle called the principal axis. That's our reference line. We then mark the center of curvature and the focal point at half the distance from the center of curvature to the actual mirror. Now this is really important. You can't just freehand the mirror because it actually does need a curvature where the center would be where you would put the center of that actual circle. If it's not actually at the radius, your diagrams just aren't going to work. So to describe an image, now remember there are thousands and thousands and billions of different rays leaving the object in all directions. But where they meet is where the image is actually going to occur. Now we don't want to draw all these rays, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick a few rays that are really easy that we always know where they're going to go and wherever those rays meet up, that must be where the rest of the rays meet up, so we don't really need to draw them. Now, typically, we're going to draw the image as an arrow with its tip, where that image location meet point is. So, what are the three easiest rays for us to draw? Well, the ray that goes in parallel to the principal axis is always going to come back through the focal point. That's the red arrow that I've drawn here. It's always going to go in parallel, out through F. We always know where that ray is going to go. We also know that the ray that goes in through the focal point is going to come back out parallel. And just to be careful, we can actually do it with two rays, but just to make sure we're right, we can draw a third ray. Any line, ray that is on line with the center of curvature will always hit and bounce straight back because it's always hitting at 90 degrees. Where those rays meet, that's where our image is going to form. So our image, our picture of the candle, will actually form with its tip right at the point where those meet. So the other nice thing is where, what the image's properties are just depend on where the object is. For example, if we put the object really, really far away and we draw those three rays, the one coming in straight, out through F, in through F, out straight, and in through C, you'll notice they meet at one point. That's the tip of your image. And if we draw in our little image arrow there, you're going to notice a couple of things. Well, first off, the image is much smaller. You'll also notice the image is upside down, it's inverted and it's real. And if you want to know where the image is, all you have to do is measure the distance from the image to the mirror. So just measure, take a ruler, measure from the image to the mirror, there's your di Im image distance. All right. If we put the object right on top of the center of curvature and draw our rays, we see the ray going in parallel comes out through F, the ray going in through F comes out parallel, and where they meet is actually right underneath the object. So what you get is, you get an image that is at exactly the same space 
it's the same size and it's inverted and again it's real because that's where because that's where the light actually meets light really meets there you put a screen there you're going to see it it's a real image If we put the object closer than the center of curvature, so we put it between the center of curvature and the focal point, if we draw our three rays, the ray in parallel, out through F, in through F, out parallel, and we line it up with the center, what you'll notice is you get an object, an, sorry, an image farther that's bigger than the object. If you're watching this on a data projector right now, that's exactly what you're seeing. The image is the object is put really close to the focal point, so you're seeing a very much, much larger image much farther away on the screen. And because you can see it on the screen, you know it's got to be real. So the image is farther, bigger, inverted, and it's real because you can see it on a screen. Now, by the way, you may be wondering, well, why aren't I seeing it upside down? That's because the image in the data projector is actually projected upside down so that when it hits the mirror, it reflects back right side up. Okay, if the object's at the focal point, so if it's at F, if you'll notice, in parallel, out through F, the ray going in through F goes down and doesn't hit anything, so we're just going to ignore it, and the ray from the hit the center bounces back. You'll notice these are parallel. They are never, parallel lines will not meet. So, in fact, if the object's at the focal point, you will get no image, ever. So, at F, no image, because those lines are going to be parallel. If the object is inside the focal point, if it's closer to the mirror than the focal point, you'll notice the two rays that we draw in parallel out through F and the center one, they are kind of spreading out here. They're never going to meet because they're spreading out. But, if you put your eye there and looked along those paths of rays, they would actually seem to meet at a point inside the mirror. So, if you looked in the mirror, you would actually see a larger upright virtual image inside the mirror. So, you would see an image that's larger and upright but it's virtual because the light isn't really coming from there. The light's not actually coming from there, it just seems to be coming from there. But since no, the light's actually spreading out, you're never going to get a real image. Now, a convex mirror is always going to give you a virtual image because if we look at the ray, the ray going in towards the virtual focal point comes out parallel. The ray going in parallel reflects farther away as if it came from a virtual focal point, And the ray towards the center will just stay straight. Now if you're going to notice, these two rays are never going to meet, but if you're looking down the rays, you'll see a small virtual image right there. So the image in a convex mirror, or a diverging mirror, is always virtual. It's always upright, and it's always smaller. Now, so now we know everything we need to know about finding images in mirrors. All you do is you draw three simple rays and look at where they meet. And the only thing that changes the properties is where do you put the object? 